poems from 2021 to the present. Sonnet. Paul Valeray published sparingly, then quit writing poetry altogether to study how the mind works. For 20 years, he explored the difference between Pushkin and Lemontov. In Russia, Pushkin is the sun, but Lemontov is nearer to the moon. Tolstoy's War and Peace was a meteor that fell into mid-century Europe. I prefer to sleep rather than to read. If I wiggle my toe, an entire foot crescendos. In the room where women come and go, Chagall, chat, chat, just autumn and endangered candles share queer snow. Sonnet eight and a half. A finger ends each of Mastriani's scenes, implying a fatal fluency. Everything he saw he drew toward and into himself. It was not really a question of pointing to a realistic reproduction of ennui represented in the film about which one could have many reservations. In this matter, the visible everything had a cost, and in a strange way, so did standing in for Federico Fendellini's sexual fantasies. What truth did he embrace in those few moments of clarity? When he hit snags in his writing, did he bury his disappointment in work, abandon himself in crowds, take up a team sport? Fencing. <clears throat> when I was nine, I was flipping through the dictionary in the F's, and, s and I saw a guy in a white outfit with a sword, and I thought I could do that. Dad had his foibles, too. For example, he and I couldn't agree on cleaning up my room. Then I'd have to buy back all my toys for a nickel each, and if I slept late on Sundays, he'd pour cold water in my ears. The DSM-5 was also a kind of dictionary, a.k.a. the Book of Woe, as if the bloody circumstances of my life had been shrink-wrapped until all the words were colorless oxymorons, like affordable housing, the evanescence of vapor, the beauty of drifting trash, clouds pulled around my shoulders like a cloak. Wolf. If somehow the boy survived, what then? Wouldn't he stick out like a fallen angel, not majestic like Satan, but as some angry environmentalist? No, the end justifies the means. No, Wolf was real, but nobody came to the boy's rescue because of his checkered past with the merciless Huskow villagers. Maybe it was an act of self-preservation. Couldn't he just cry up mulligan like they do, they, they do in golf? To grip a golf club very loosely is like holding a wounded bird. Lately he goes by camel light with a gray old lady, herd immunity no closer than economic prosperity in the 1930s. Now nearly 50 and he's no closer to being the boy he was than to the man he thought he'd be. One day in April. Sometimes a word or two from my friend in an email, an unfinished line from a poem a handwritten note or a news clipping regarding his latest book might inspire the kernel of a poem or the beginning of a play. My friend lived in historical time, not in eternal dying. He had yesterdays and a today and a tomorrow. I can picture him in an Elizabethan collar, doublet and all, standing in front of Costco with its armada of shopping carts. All this artifice is truly remarkable. If the point de Venise of Magnolia petals fringing the highway is mere detail, and so is the woman in the supermarket whose orchid colored turtleneck repeats an incandescent azalea blossom. The rose apricot pool of evening light and the still blue river mirrors the airplanes overhead. How to be alone for Miles Champion. A paper-thin margin is all that separates us from a lived horizon and the perfect accord of severance. A few islands of camaraderie and friendship appeared in a blue sea of COVID mess. Some early glimmers of fame and fortune gliding through a series 
those Zoom meetings like those Hollywood Squares we love, just 70s kids. When teaching English comp remotely, I'd refer to my students' screen presence as my divine little silent circles. In the Paradiso, we learned a solar dark spot to smudge our otherwise would-be perfect state. After the lady who in paradise is my mind disclosed the truth, which is ours, and so is bad luck, nurse of unfair desire and irreconcilable similarities, we are we are as fictitious as the poem. You have to find it, said Pound, before dying, the cathedral-like structure. After a breakup, reconciliation can be had in good times in small doses under a doctor's care. Simple deceits make up a home life. Sometimes I would go out of my way to make sure my mother didn't suspect that I had not taken my meds by simply filling a glass of water and rinsing it in the sink. Wittgenstein did his best thinking when peeling an orange or a potato, usually all in one sitting. Is it so unusual not to feel like going home to your mother's birthday? After all, how little you knew about her. Granted, the first lesson one learns is how to be alone. But we learn so much more when asleep with everyone watching over us and in dreams in which all is well. The Oculus. The two reflecting pools glitter like jewels at the bottom of a cave where the north and south towers once stood. My eye extends rapidly and in a straight line to, to the plane opposite the Oculus, a wedge of light tightly bound like the finest white feathers of a bird in flight. Then gradually my eyes adjust as if stepping from a dark theater into the bright afternoon, and I see a vast plaza and amid the dense tangle of streets and lights reflecting off the huts and vaulting into the sight, soaking up space with a watery glow. That same month during the summer of 07, we lost two great directors in one fell swoop, Bergman and Antonini. The roofers. True hermetic Marxist solitude meant taking a job in late summer on a roofing crew atop a church. A windhammer demolition job. Palms imported from Florida and surf sweet roofs queue up Lumina Avenue. A voice in the hand said feel good Phil, two in the sand. His presence on the crew of roofers was a sign of punctuality. The forever poised shift between forced bondage and the stained footprints left behind to mark their passage. John Locke lodged no complaint against human bondage. Each word was such a constituent particle, units of labor, money, raw materials, more simplified and less likely to accrete, snag, or clog in the process. Shoveling heaps of dust, sweat stung my eyes, warding off the flies I stumbled around in a daze as the roofers stripped the deck, laid out insulation, and smeared on the bubbling black asphalt. Not weed season. To speak of the man from Hope, Arkansas, or the man of Hope, is to declare, as Americans, a record of history. Asphalt bubbles black ooze under the crumbling bridges of California and the overflowing sewage drains of Houston and the rusted railroad tracks of the northeastern corridor. Streets of the capital lined with parking spaces, haystacks, and a slow opening of sycamores in Metuchen, New Jersey. Toward the end of knotweed season, a red mirage followed by a blue wave. On January 6, 2021, the day of the insurrection, opposite colors mingled from yellow to purple, like nebula and a well bloom from the hot metal's impact. Eye of the storm. They say SCOTUS is the eye of the storm, the branch of government least swayed by partisan politics, Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Amy Barrett, and the obscenity of Trump. A push for a conservative seat as if Roe versus Wade could be overturned by exerting hydraulic pressure. Already storm bands of rain and churning wind tear loose from the roving eye of the storm. A sovereign surveyor might abruptly end his term, looming above a mountain of contending theories about how our institutions can be inculcated in the dark waters of white supremacy, 
the polis at the bottom of our existence, the bottom of the sea masks all civility, relieving, relieving idlers of all their convictions. Lincoln's hand clasps a fascist, a leather thong that tightly binds all 13 wrongs, one for each of the original colonies, but there is a twist. A bald eagle sits atop the axe, an American touch, e pluribus unum, out of, or out of many, one. The promenade. Rather than wanting to see beneath the surface, I want clarity instead of things suggesting something else. There are people who enter into one's life, but for a fleeting instant, then they are lost like clouds that pass or recede into the background of the promenade. I don't like the winter days ending so early, the sky going pale, then dark. I look up to find the moon's brilliance and the lighted clouds lurking behind the trees and water towers, and I am reminded, even here, of where I am and exa I'm exactly where I want to be. Word on the street. Aunt Frida and Uncle Charlie supposedly fled a war-torn Europe the way a fly escaped the swatter. They settled in Avenue C. C is for crazy and D is for dead. Klaus Nomi opening up for a twisted sister at the Starlight in Sarahville, New Jersey, was, culturally speaking, light years away from the East Village with its magnetic infrastructure. Word on the street was always a year ahead of the cops. <clears throat> with their euphemisms like planned shrinkage, which meant an uptick in crime. Walls of garbage, broken porticos, bright Christmas trees, blood splatter of dead men's shoes, blotches of speed, head and tail lights, entering and exiting the Holland, a necklace of diamonds and rubies. Philadelphia. Taking cabs to Second and Chestnut, to the Khyber, and then after hours at the South Street Diner with Dory and Rick, who could map himself in the gaze per square mile at various locations in the Philly area during the early aughts. Bump. The last drop, Bob and Barbara's shampoo, Ulana's and Dirty Frank's, 13th and Locust, a concentration of camp, Broad Street, or the Avenue of the Arts, also known as the Avenue of the Tarts. But sometimes on a strange night like tonight, at 7.10 p.m., as the sun sets, the humidity drops, the temperature stays the same, and a warm, dry breeze tiptoes to the city of Philadelphia. Rome. The whole time in Rome, I'm quaking with holy awe at the very mention of Shelley, who in the last section of Adonis gave a trisyllabic, trembling shiver of slacks. Church bells rang along with burglar shop alarm, the sound of rain on the paving stones. I continued through a deep tangle of winding back streets, stands of urban lemons, Narrow pedestrian ways and a small, small spigots from which quiet streams of water falls into basins. To wander was to discover in the process a love for cappuccino and pellegrino water. And poncetti is everywhere on tables at restaurants in the afternoon. Sweet are the ortolans, but worry reigns. Paris. With the epigraph from... The cure, how beautiful you are. You remember that day in Paris we wandered through the when we wandered through the rain. While we were walking in the rain near the ugliest landmark in Paris with Aurea and her friend Katie Fillane, a feeling of infatuation overcame me, like the faint crackling of feathers and under fingertips and opium tea. Well, I'll tell you very honestly, Katie said. I felt like taking you by the arm and talk and talk with you for ages, as when Newton lassoed the moon to the earth. Then when you sang how beautiful you are, by the cure, I nearly melted into the air. Maybe I shouldn't really tell you this, because you will start thinking things, but on that day I was very happy. The River Otter Three times in my life I've heard that rapid tapping sound of a river otter as it snowshoed up a small stream while coasting thus in streamlined musical arrangements as though a small piece for viola and piano were in progress. The, the river otter nibbles at a treasured swirl of leaves. By what right do you drink from my flagon of life? 
I stood between a corpse and an open window, a graph of a mind moving with coordinates X and Y resembling fly specks on an old siding or an advancing storm cloud on a summer's day. The polar bear. To be good, things have to work, but does that necessarily mean if they work, they are necessarily good? The endless figure eight laps a polar bear makes in his tiny icy pool at the zoo seemed like the tick-tock of purgatory. The days beetled overhead, glacier-like, winter's trace dripping from the eaves. To Emily Dickinson, one need not travel to Niagara Falls to feel the impact of falling water. That's how Robert Frost characterized visiting the Emily Dickinson house in Amherst. If Emily was a kind of bottomless project in American letters, one had as much chance of getting to the bottom of it as one would spotting the shoebox full of master letters in the Rockies with a flashlight. Where to begin? Much of her work at variance with the verse culture of her time. Couldn't one say that I felt a funeral in my brain conveys her crucial vocational crisis, and that here she came close to touching the bottom? The Oceanic, a prose lyric essay, or prose poem, rather. <clears throat> the Oceanic. In the interpretation of dreams, Freud recounts a dream in which he was collecting neckties that washed up on the shore of England. The ties were decorated with starfish. Freud saw blades. Perhaps sharks are symbols of the sexual complex transposed to the eating complex. Above the entrance to the oceanic, the blue shark swims in a tank of flickering neon light. The blue shark no longer smells blood or human feet thrashing in the water. Its eyes have no bite. Eyes, eyes full of ennui no longer care about the shafts of sunlight that pierce the cruel privacy of the sea as it slaps against the pier legs. The feeling of something unbounded, limitless, oceanic. Pelicans skim the surface of the sea and scoop up fish with the black gullets that glitter in the sun like money bags in a casino. Cape Cod is an oasis of silence in the eastern corridor, and Murr Woods is only a few miles outside of San Francisco. Niagara Falls are a raw, massive, pounding curtain of water. It's as if we were clearing the channels to an invisible radio. Many voices, one dial. Oh, I remember three days without rain. The radio had clamored for many a moony night and memory stuttered its vengeance. Nearby at a table on the seaside, I sat at a table beside a couple. She explains to her husband that life depended on its strangeness. The quietness of things that lies in every fold of the hills like white dinosaur skin. I feel a ripple of thought, as though they breathed on the crest of small disturbances unlike air. They appear too real in their shapelessness, but they sat together in the silence of each other's gaze while eating artichokes with anchovies. The man pricks his finger on a pedal point. Perhaps there was a tear in his eye, anything to give himself a form. It was all he could do to breathe, as you know. Artichokes are flowers. Tooth marks, the meat gone, as though it is a strange green daisy. You mean X has been unfaithful? Who has she been seeing? The woman shows him a picture and says, You, you must be my doppelganger, he says. I thought it was you being mysterious, she says. The Oceanic is a suitable theme for English 102b. To my embarrassment, what I want is to love what my students love. The postcard collage of Einstein's tongue sticking out on the fridge and Freud's wine-dark ambivalence about human nature. In Einstein's dream, all the cows huddling near the electric fence touched the earth so lightly as though nothing had happened. But from a farmer's perspective, the cows jumped in the air one by one. Would Einstein have stuck his tongue out at him too, despite his usual bashfulness of forever invisible features? A good thesis is a bit like walking along the beach and coming upon a dead seal. <clears throat> in August, the, the oceanic was grossly closed in by a muddy vesture of decay. 
you could either make a hash out of what little nature had provided, or take a piece of driftwood and sharpen its edges to a single point. This would take you the better part of the day. Imagine pressing ears to the wall and listening for the oceanic hum of the current moving, like the circulation system unending like the sea. Does it come from Niagara Falls or a soft machine swirling in my head? Waylaid plans by Tesla to light the ocean or build a ring around the earth so that people could surfing, circumnavigate the world in a day. Harness with engines. And accidental executions were common before Tesla introduced ACDC. It's a popular subject. Pigeons and the power lines feel its brightness. Sestina, homage to Frank Franz Klein with Lorraine, Lorraine Lupo. During the holidays, when insanity runs rampant in the family, a slip of the paintbrush could reveal white on black colored canvases. The painter Franz Klein got this inside tip from Clem, who, pointing to a black dog-eared phone book, said, you should plant your flag here. A rose is an insignificant plant to a dog unless another has pissed on it, but in the long run, people will go crazy making plants because dogs don't know what's good for them and the painters are no different. Will the dog be whistled inside or stay put? The cans on the shelf were varied in color. I looked at them for a while, but I'm colorblind. Logic didn't help. I know that a plant is green because you said so, but... Inside my head isn't your purview, just because you run this joint like a Warhol factory. The paintings are ugly, but who will let the dogs out the dogs? Visions of grandeur dog my waking moments. They are technicolored, like the department store, painted to be painted over like a row of plants. Then the spring rain shower runs all over the street, and the children go inside. Must I forever be kept inside? A dog cannot lie, neither can a dog be sincere. My Springer Spaniel loved to run and leap up in the fields. He was colored black and white. The fragile fern plants wrap the pavilion. Now that my painting has dried, I'll put it on the painting pile. Should I burn it or take it inside? Still it rains. Even the plants are tired of it. I towel off the dog. I know it's not true that the color of the red makes the bull run. Inside the run-down building, painted sandstone green, Broken colored glass, dying ficus plant, smell of a wet dog. A kind of vertigo. Spring birds in flight orient themselves and correct for drift by listening to a chorus of peepers in a pond far below. Rock lobsters scuttle from head to tail in tandem conga lines. Not all who wander are lost. Think of the enlarged posterior hippocampus of taxi drivers in New York City. The 24-7 lure of accessibility tied to our gadgets, as in a spell like the genetic imprint of an ant. The irrepressible dialectic of history, two steps forward and one step back. The Wyoming frontier was once stitched with buffalo grass. To reach the nearest city, just follow the rail line, our permanent zone of transit, a train, an arc, a fleeting vantage point, slow to pass, yet still be rocked in their wake. Rejoice. An unusually fatiguing day, a chapter of accidents containing an oral history of our time, its ocular O's, like a pair of spectacles that Joyce wore, the pressed flowers, mummified spring and summer from Gibraltar, will outlast all our triumphs. We are outliers, disconnected from each other, buying trinkets to give our lives significance, our, our visages flattened, pressed into books. Come in under the shadow of this red rock, so lost in thought that we are barely there at all. See rocks from the islands, panel after panel, pieces of a mosaic, festooned with grape leaf and pomegranates, amphoras, the style, red style on white, we hope the sun remains strong, but not too cruel. Notable is the elegant economy by which we live, towns perched upon the cliffs like white encrustations. Let it be known that old age is a kind of Circe, and nothing can revise her sentence even by a day. Another memory ruined for us, all our attachments to that life cut off, too painful for us to go into the free world. 
No use keeping tabs on what we can never be part of goes through everyone's mind. The midday stillness, the human catastrophe that waylays weeks, years. Cornfields rotate during that rotation against sky. Yes, everything turned out exactly like we expected. An emergency was a future imagined, not the Indonesian Icarus circling our heads and throwing rice grains into our eyes as we slept. Thank you for listening.